Okay, uh, welcome to our final database tutorial. This one is over ScienceDirect. Uh, ScienceDirect is actually a subject-specific database, which is different from EBSCOhost and ProQuest. EBSCOhost and ProQuest are general databases, so they cover a variety of different topics, while ScienceDirect is going to focus on scientific fields with an emphasis on the hard sciences, such as biology, chemistry, physics, engineering, health science, and etc. Um, because it is a subject-specific database, things are going to look a little bit different based on what we're used to from EBSCOhost and ProQuest, but I'm going to show you how to use it, just break it down the same way we did last time. So the first thing you might notice when you open ScienceDirect is that there's not just one big keyword search bar for the basic search. They're already encouraging you to start giving more specific information about what you're looking for before you even get into your results, which can be really helpful if you already know some of this information. Let's say you already found an article by an author in a different database that you really liked, so you could just search directly for an author here by using the same keywords you used before and the author that you already found that you like. I'm also going to scroll down and show you guys some more features of this page, which include uh, they've grouped things by topic. So you can see under physical sciences and engineering, we're getting these subtopics of chemical engineering, chemistry, energy, etc. And they do the same thing for life sciences, health sciences, and social sciences. Now I will say, even though there are social sciences and humanities in this database, it might not be your first place to look for these types of subject areas. And then here you can browse by publication by clicking on the letters um, that obviously the title of the publication will start with. All right, so let's go back up to the top and we will start off with the same search terms we've been using um, and we're gonna begin with cancer. Okay, so the first thing you might notice is that there are suggested publications and the reason that ScienceDirect is offering these publications is actually because ScienceDirect only has journals and books in their database. So you don't have to worry when you're searching this database whether or not the materials are already peer reviewed or scholarly because that's all that this database includes. So you will notice when we go down to these limiters or um, they call them refiners, uh, that's not even an option for scholarly or peer-reviewed it'll ask you what kind of what type of article that you want but that indicates you know that everything in here is an article you can search for specific publications and you can search for access type so uh actually science direct which is made by elsevier is really trying to push the open access stuff. Um, just so you know a little bit more about ScienceDirect and Elsevier, this is actually a really prestigious database that a lot of our faculty members really pushed for us to have, and they are actually helping us pay for access for it. So that's really awesome um, because we have a higher quality database. That's not to say that the other databases that we have aren't good. This one is just very sought after because our faculty like to publish in the journals that are accessible through Science Direct. So uh, let's go ahead and actually get into one of these articles and see what the article details look like. All right, so let's start here on the left-hand side of the page with the outline. 
Um, this just breaks the article down into smaller bits and pieces so you can go to exactly which section that you're looking for. What's really nice is that it even has a link to the keywords so you don't have to try to figure out what the keywords are. You can just click and see the keywords that are already ascribed to this particular article. And this outline is actually really helpful because it breaks the article down similarly to how we discussed when we talked about how to read scholarly, scholarly materials. All right, um, so let's go ahead and scroll, keep scrolling down here on the right. We can see uh, links, direct links to the figures, uh, the tables, and also to download everything. Uh, if we move back to the top in the middle, we can see that we can download this as a PDF and you know save it as you do a PDF. There's also the share button, which is something we haven't seen before. You can share it to your email, but there's also a variety of social media apps that you can share this article to. And then export is going to take the information in this article or the citation information and send it to a software that is not part of ScienceDirect or Elsevier. Okay, so in the middle, you will see the basic information about the article as well as the article itself. So you can see that this comes from the journal Lung Cancer. This is the volume, the date, and the pages. Um, this is the title. You've got some highlights. You've got an abstract, materials, and methods. And as you keep scrolling, you will come to the introduction. And from there, it is the whole article right here in your browser if you'd rather view it like this instead of in the PDF. All right, uh, back up to the top again. We're gonna look here on the right-hand side, which has some recommended articles in the same subject areas as what we searched for. So you'll notice that they are either in the same publication or they have to do with cancer. And so that is about all that we need to pay attention to in the article's detailed record. I will say um, you can register and make an account with ScienceDirect, and that gives you similar features to EBSCOhost and ProQuest, where you can save articles to your account, and you can also make a notification for certain topic areas that you're interested in. I'm going to take you to the advanced search option for ScienceDirect and you'll see it's quite different from what we are used to. There aren't really any drop down menus. There's not a specific area to say I want to do a Boolean search, but ScienceDirect does support all of these types of searches, it's just not as obvious. Um, so actually one thing I do want to discuss is that ScienceDirect is automatically looking for wildcard terms. So uh, the example we've been using all this time is organization because it can be spelt with an S or a Z. We don't have to do that in ScienceDirect. It's already looking for variations on spellings. So it's, it's good there. Um, it's also looking for variations on accents. So you don't have to worry about uh, well, this term is in Spanish and it has an accent. I don't know how to do the accent. It's fine. ScienceDirect is already on it. Um, so if you do try to do a wild card search in this database, it won't work because it's already accounting for that. Then we do have the Boolean search operators that you can just do by typing in here. So I've typed cancer and childhood, which is our normal search terms. I know you can't see it very well because uh, it's not clearing the text there, but I promise you that's what we're looking for. So this is our first Boolean search using the word and. 
as you can see, we've gotten quite a few results on this, and the highlighting shows us that our search terms did work. We're getting childhood cancer right next to each other. We're also getting childhood and cancer in various places within the title. Uh, so this is a good this is a good search uh, successful search rather. Um, okay, so I did not talk about the filters here on the left hand side when I was just doing the basic search, so I'm going to cover that right now. Um, another thing that's different about ScienceDirect is that it doesn't have the range of years set up quite the same way as the other two databases. Instead of saying, I want articles published between 2015 and 2020, you just check mark the years that you want to search. So I'm going to go ahead and check mark all of them from 2015 to 2021. So we get the most recent updated materials. Um, the reason it has access to 2021 is probably because it has some preprint papers that are not in their final form yet, but they are eventually going to be published next year. And that's really the only limiter that we need to worry about because, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it's already narrowed everything down to scholarly peer-reviewed articles. Um, so you can also see that full text access is available, and uh, they also give you open access notices. Uh, that's something that Elsevier is trying to work on because they are more of a pricey database. So they're trying to provide more open access to universities and people that don't have the money to pay for it. Okay, so uh, that is about it for our ScienceDirect tutorial. As I mentioned, um, most of the special searches or advanced searches that we've been trying. Uh, ScienceDirect already has built into their just basic search, so you don't really have to worry about that as much. Um, so this is a really good resource if you are searching for something within the science field, and it's fairly new at Lincoln, so I did want to highlight it and teach everybody how to use it. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.